months since I made a video. When you get a bunch of new gear, I just sit down the first day and next day make a video. There's cables introduced, new drivers, different types of baffles, combination of using those with my custom baffle, my ugly DIY baffles. Adding the W15s in the mix, which are now in my baffles in the back with each combination. Understand what these cables are bringing um, to the game as opposed to the cables I use on a regular basis. Um, yeah, basically, guys, I've been listening to music for a few weeks uh, just to make sure that I was I regrounded myself with 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 this gear. Uh, understand what it is I'm hearing, um, reestablish my baseline. Yeah. So behind me, you have the platinum 10 drivers in a black, in a black baffle at the bottom of them, just for comparison's sake is a silver 10 driver. So the silver 10 was the previous flagship. And I think the platinum 10, might be the new flagship. I don't think they're out yet, so that's why I don't know. I don't know what the marketing around it, the song is going to decide. But I think that's the idea. Now next to that, in the other baffle, the colored baffle, you have the Fast 15s, which are also new from Lee Song. And for comparison's sake, at the bottom, I put the F-15s. Um... All right, I'm going to start with the Platinum 10s for now. First impressions on the Platinum 10. This one uses a different kind of magnet in this driver than the Silver 10s do. And it, as you can tell, too, is a different face plug. The face plug on the Platinum 10 is more of a curved aluminum dome. I say aluminum, but I'm not sure what material it is. It kind of feels like aluminum. Let's see. Um, the weight difference between the Platinum 10s and the Silver 10s is noticeable. Uh, the Platinum 10s weigh more. Um, the, you can tell the magnet is significantly bigger than the Silver 10s when you compare them side by side. Uh, but visually, the rest looks very similar. Now, my impressions are not going to be revealing of the true nature of the Platinum 10s. Because right off the bat, I am pretty sure the QTS factor for the Platinum 10s is very similar to a Silver 10. If it's more or less, it's not by much. Why do I say that? Because the Platinum 10s on their own in an open baffle need help, just like the Silver 10s do. They don't give that lower mid, that luscious um, upper mid and low and upper base, mid base, forget low base. Um, it doesn't provide it on its own in an open baffle. So without having the specs in front of me, it, that screams the QTS uh, factor is low. Uh, so it's not ideal on their own for an open baffle. So that being said, the Platinum 10 drivers push a level of air and transparency that no other Lee Sung driver has come close to at this point. So I've said in the past that using the Silver 10s or the F-15s uh, or the Fast 8s or the Fast 10s, there was part of me that was con considering adding a Super Tweeter to that setup to get that last little bit of transparency and air and extra, extra, extra texture on the top end. Uh, with the Platinum 10s, I don't feel like I need that. Not anymore. Nope, 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 nope. This is, uh, I mean, as far as full range drivers go, this is, it's focal level detail and airiness. Uh, like, or beryllium tweeter, like, level. Or a full range. Um, 
So that's very, very, very impressive. And quite frankly, uh, ladies and gents, ladies, there's one lady watching, maybe? Debbie? Maybe another one? When I experienced the Platinum Tens in a proper enclosure, because my gut is telling me that the Platinum Tens in a good enclosure is going to raise the hairs on the back of your neck, the back on, the, on your arms. Uh, it is going to be spectacular. And I mean spectacular. I don't know how much the Platinum Tens are going to retail for. I really don't. Uh, I hear rumors that maybe in December, January, there might be a first batch available. Very exciting. Very exciting uh, because I think they are approaching the big boys level of of performance with the Platinum 10s. I mean, big boys like the, the select few established uh, brands of full range drivers. Uh, that cost, um, you know, as much as a car. Uh, these are getting in, the, getting into their territory. That's really good. Very, very good. All right. So stay tuned and keep listening to him a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna send them to Thomas too to see what uh, what Thomas uh, thinks of them and how he can make them sound in his room. Uh, in my room, I really, really enjoy listening to them. I mean, it's. It's top notch, um, you know. Some of some of the best some of the best uh, sound I've heard in my room when I match them with the W15s. Even though it's two separate baffles, I, you know, I do my best with positioning to get uh, to get the time alignment right between the two drivers. Um, but I think that the low frequency waves are not as finicky when it comes to that, because um, I managed to get them to sound super coherent i mean you can't i i can't tell i can't tell the difference i can't tell that they're not in the same baffle i can't tell that there's any uh time arrival issues whatsoever um, even though they're in different baffles and they're offset from each other i try to still keep them so that they're still within the same angle um of my sweet spot uh, and they sound freaking amazing uh and these are handling a hell of a lot more types of music than the Silver Tens do on their own. Uh, like I mentioned in the Origin, uh, my Origin speaker uh, impression video. The Origin like shined beyond uh, most other speakers I've heard when it came to just jazz and vocals, but fell short in a lot of other genres of music, especially that the ones that were very, very complex and extremely dynamic, um, but it's not that much of an issue with the Platinum 10s. The Platinum 10s are keeping up with everything I throw at them and accompanied with a pair of W15s. That's just wow. Um, large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. Now the Fast 15s, so first impressions on the Fast 15, uh, it's like the F-15s had a baby with the Silver 10s. Uh, there's positive, positives from both drivers show up in the Fast 15s. Um, positives uh, like uh, image, it, the, the size and scale of the imaging uh, that you get from the F-15s, that large that, that breathtaking uh, image size, like that IMAX feel of the soundstage uh, that's still present in, in, in the Fast 15s. Um, you also get, um, you get the, the super cool mid-range that the, that the F-15s can do. Um, I'm talking in an open baffle here. Really cool. Uh, they give out a level of detail that's very similar to the Silver 10s, uh, but I find, to my ear, a little less fatiguing. So depending on what you like, not that Silver 10s are fatiguing, what I mean by that is 
uh, the silver tens have a more have have a, a tendency to be more uh, crisp, whereas the fast uh, the fast fifteens give you that level of detail, but not quite the same sharpness or crispness um, in the details and the textures that it gives you. Uh, so essentially, it would sound like the perfect full range open baffle speakers, uh, but it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Unfortunately, it also adopts a few of the negative, the, the, the negatives of the F15 and the Silver 10s as well. One I just referred to being, even though it kicks up the, the detail, the texture and the air, uh, similar to a Silver 10, the weakness it's getting from the F15 side is that it's not as sharp. It's not as uh, defined as the Silver 10. But it's definitely a step up from the, from the uh, F-15s. What it loses that the F-15s have over it um, is similar to the weakness of the Silver 10s, which is in an open baffle, that upper bass and mid bass is not as present as they are with the F-15s. So, the good from the F-15, they get the mid-range, they get the scale, the size, the sound stage of the and, and the size of the imaging. They get the uh, they get the detail of the Silver 10, but not quite as high as Silver 10. They still roll off just a hair um, compared to the Silver 10s, and they don't have the level of of, of upper and mid bass that the F-15s provide in the baffle. Now that being said. When I use the Fast 15 in my baffle, which is wider, heavier than, than the baffle you see there, that issue becomes, it diminishes. You do get more of the upper bass, you get better lower mid-range, um, and you get, you, you get that a little bit better of an attack actually too. Uh, so what that tells me is that the Fast 15s in a, bigger baffle than this and a heavier baffle uh, than this will shine um, more in the lower mids and upper bass region uh, and frankly i think would be satisfying for me it would be satisfying um, even without a subwoofer for vocals and jazz and blues it, it, it would be very satisfying to listen to but in these baffles, I find that the baffles are a little bit too light and there's, I think there's not enough surface for, um, for the uh, Fast 15s to generate uh, those, those mid and lower frequencies. So keep that in mind. Remember guys, this is still just a first impression. Um, I've been listening to them for a few weeks, uh, but I know the Fast 15s already had close to 100 hours when they were delivered to me. Um, but if I, rely on the performance of the F-15s, the F-15s took more than 100 hours to really, really start shining. Um, it, uh, to me, it was double that. It was at least 200 hours. And when they hit 500 hours, that's when they really started, really started to shine and, and make my jaw drop. And that's when the goosebumps started, started happening. Um, so I'm gonna give it more time, definitely gonna give it more time. Um, but Fast 15s, matched with a pair of W15s, whoo hoo, grander, more, more sound staging. The sound staging is much larger. The image, the image, the instruments are, are bigger. Um, to me, they feel more lifelike in size, um, but it depends on what you're used to. If you're used to, uh, if you're used to things being more constrained and, and that's what you're used to, you might feel like that's life, uh, uh, life size. So when you hear Fast 15s in a big baffle with W15s, you might feel like it's too large. Um, but go listen to live music once in a while, try to sit up close um, and you'll get, a, you'll, you'll get a barometer check on what you consider to be a large, Im a large image versus a small image. And not everybody actually reacts to that. Um, I, I have people come into my room and I ask them how, they, how large they feel the instruments are and for them, they say, no, I just, they can't tell the size. They just know positioning. So it depends, everybody's different. Some people feel like the image is taller. Some people feel like the image is lower in the room. 
starting to realize that there's a lot of individual in individuality when it comes to um, identifying soundstage elements and size and focus. Uh, everybody's ear is a little bit different, right? That's okay. So that's the first impression. A uh, little boring video to start, but uh, you can see the differences uh, between the F-15s and the Fast 15s. There is one thing about the Fast 15s that I don't like, and that's the color of that outer rim. I wish it was all one color, it was the same color. Um, I can see that they have, it looks like more of a, uh, a softer material, right? Uh, which they use on, I think, most of the fast uh, drivers. The fast eight have the same material. And if you put a spotlight behind it, it's almost translucent, you can see through it. Um, and I think this is what helps, um, helps lighten, lighten the cone, give it, uh, helping it, get it giving it um, a faster, a faster response. Um, those are definitely different, but man, I wish oh, there was one full color. So yeah, let's go check them up up close. Oh.